What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Single Player Let's Play series. So, um, I've been having fun with the FTV Revelation pack, but I've been wanting to work on this for a little while. So, what I'm doing right now is making a magnet ring, and this one's from actually editions instead of normally what I do is uh, Batania. So, we're going to go ahead and make up this ring. It doesn't take a whole lot to do, and the reason I'm doing this is because it'll make mining a lot easier. I've actually come up with a plan for mining that's, uh, Pretty freaking efficient, actually. I really like doing it, and it's really fun to do. So basically the plan is the Ring of Magnetizing will pick up items nearby, and I'll show you that here in just a little while. And it also is really nice because um, paired with a couple of EFLNs from Tinker's Construct, which are crafted with just a piece of flint and a piece of sulfur, you can actually um, get yourself a whole lot of mined resources pretty quickly. Now the problem with this is that, um, you know, you have these items that go everywhere and you have to be able to manage picking them up and getting them stored. So since I've got the magnet, we can actually do that. So I hop down here to the mines and if you throw the CFLN just like as an item, you'll see that it'll get absorbed towards me with the magnet. So let's throw one actually like a snowball. And you see it does this huge area of explosion, but it doesn't destroy our items. It actually keeps them there. We can pick them up. So, the problem is that this is going to create a huge dark area, so let's look into the Lantern of Paranoia. This is pretty cool, it's from Reliquary, but it requires a slime drop, and I don't know that I have one of those. No, it doesn't look like I do. So, um, I can go kill slimes for one, I guess. I don't really know how I'm going to solve this. Oh, wait, um, let me go look at the, uh, so what is it, Sojourner Staff? Yeah, there we go, Sojourner Staff. This guy requires, oh, wait, Void Tear requires... Uh, slime drop. Great. So we're going to need one anyways. So let me go find a slime and I'll be right back and get everything handled. So I just got back from a very long trip, as you can tell by all the ender pearls I have. But I found a swamp biome and killed a slime. So it took a little while, but now we have everything we need, including the blaze core, to make ourselves this lantern of paranoia. Now the reason I want to make one of these is because it will take torches from your inventory and place them anywhere at all that's dark enough to spawn an entity. Or a mob, rather. So it'll basically spam torches a ton, but in response, you do avoid having a lot of mobs all over the place trying to kill you. So in my opinion, it's kind of worth having, and uh, torches aren't really expensive, so let's give it a try. Yeah, see? So it again, spam torches everywhere, but look at that. Perfectly lit. So I want to move over to uh, Malice's stores for a second because I just got done building a huge new house to live in. This house that we're in is a little bit too small. And I want to give a nice, very simple, but very uh, clean looking door. Uh, something that'll match the style a little better than just a typical vanilla door would. So let's get one of these door factories going. Malice's stores is actually a really cool mod that I'll be playing with a lot more in the future. So let's go ahead and get this uh, kind of tossed together and see where we can go with it. I'm also going to go ahead and melt down these two extra iron doors in our induction smelter since it seems to be a pretty smart move to make here. So we'll go ahead and just toss this guy down next to our architect saw bench. And so there's a few settings in here. I'm going to choose just the simple rotating movement. That's the typical default like door style movement. It's a nice smooth movement. The... Uh, there's a lot of other settings, as you can see here, but I'm just going to stick with the simple ones. And opening time is literally how long the animation takes to process. So the rotating time could be shorter or longer, and I'm just going to let it be the default. I do want the redstone behavior to be standard as well, but I'm going to change the sound so that it sounds like a normal wooden door, because I think that's the material I'm going to use is some glass and some ironwood. We'll give this a try, see how it looks. Uh, so I'm using just white stained glass, and I tried it with and without the border using chisel. Uh, so you can see this is the version with the border, and it doesn't look that bad. And then if I chisel up some of this white stained glass to have no border, like with the streaked style where it has no border at all, and we can toss that in here, and I'll try it with dark oak this time as well because I might need a dark oak door. I'll see where I can put this because I have a plan that I kind of want to see how it'll work. So you can see there's still kind of a visual border there. There's not as thick of one, but you can tell that the glass isn't completely uh, cohesive as one large piece. I can live with that, but it definitely isn't the ideal solution here. So running back over here to the house, this is what I've built off camera. I would do a montage for it, but it just was kind of feeling like my channel was becoming nothing but short video montages. And I don't like that style too much. I just like doing it every now and then when there's something that I want to show how I'm doing, but don't really want to go into the details. 
Uh, this door. No, I don't like how this fits here. I'm going to try putting a border around here, and we'll see if it sticks. Let me uh, kind of play with this for a bit. So as you can tell by that quick snippet, I did not like that. But let's try to find a nice way. Uh, I'll leave that open how it is because I don't think spiders can get in. Let's find a nice way of lighting up this house. So I've played with the feral lamps before, and I really like them. They're basically like the, uh, the uh, oh, what were they called? Wraith lamps from factorization. They light up a large area, and uh, I really like them. And this is a big house. I think it'd be easy to do. So let me break all these torches down real quick, and uh, we'll go ahead and toss our new uh feral flare lamp i think probably here on these two sides the nice thing is this covers a vertical area as well so if i put these two here it actually is also going to help light up our um kind of extended attic area that i'm actually using currently a little bit more than i'm using everything else so i've started kind of working on moving stuff back and forth here and there uh this place is pretty big and we've got a lot of room but uh here you can see I've moved everything over and I've just got to kind of route some power over here now because there's no power coming to this building yet. We have to get that arranged, um, but it isn't really a terrible thing to do. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get a couple more wooden posts. We're going to need our uh, HV wire connectors and our wire relays. And we can run outside and start working on where we want to extend it to. Another thing you can see uh, while I'm getting my inventory cleaned up here is that uh, I've actually built out a proper path. I was using those path blocks before, but I decided to do an actual uh, path style that I usually do. I really like it. It's a nice randomized style, and it works pretty well. So we can go ahead and get everything kind of ready here. Get, I like having the hotbar arranged in a certain way for this entire process because it gets kind of tedious. And so because of that, I'm going to kind of skip through this. It's not really exactly interesting. I'll do one of these and kind of move on after that because... I could route this on camera this entire time, but none of you guys want to see that. You know how these work. You know how I tend to do this, and uh, it's not a difficult process at all. So let me go and get these all wired up, and we'll come back in a second. There we go. So that's got the last little pole kind of getting wired up here. And I don't have a termination point for these yet, but I do have a plan. So let me come over here and steal our HV capacitor like we had before. We can also grab our energy cell if we want to, and a couple of these cables we might need later, so I'll leave. And I think I'm going to try to figure out where I want this HV capacitor. Normally I put them in the wall, but I found myself not really liking how that looks as much. It breaks away from the visual style of the house a lot. So I'm debating how I want to do this. I think I might just put it in the ground, like directly in the grass. I don't think that's going to do too much harm to the uh, aesthetics here. And I think it might actually work out in our favor. I might even go for a bonus uh, capacitor here if we want to have a little bit of redundant power. Yeah, so I'll go ahead and make another one, have uh, some redundant power, some visual symmetry for our wiring, and uh, go ahead and get this guy set up as well. So make sure the top is an input and put down the wrong block here. Oh well, let me fix that with an actual connector, not just the relay. And we should be good to go. This guy's going to start receiving a little bit of power. I had a little bit of problem with the power production that we had earlier. Basically, there was a change in the pack where uh, aqueous accumulators do require water sources again. So I had a problem with that and had to go through and add water sources. And because of no water sources, all of my aqueous accumulators stopped working, all of my cloches ran out of water, and all of my power completely disappeared. So I had to go add water, uh, kickstart the setup because it requires the power to run. So I had to kickstart it, and then that got it working. So uh, put down the energy cell back where it was, and I'm using these hardened flux ducts for just a hot second. I think at the by the end of this episode, I do want to get some proper redstone flux ducts put in place. So let's look into that, actually. Let's, uh, let's just do that real quick, in fact. I don't think it's that bad. So redstone flux ducts are just going to use a little bit of electrum and some hardened glass. I don't have any of that on hand, really. I have that one piece of electrum lingering in the upper right-hand corner of this inventory, but I don't really have much else. So... We might go ahead and get these real quick. They're not that difficult. Uh, we have plenty of obsidian that I've been getting from mining from the uh, nice 5x5 hammer. 
and uh, we can go ahead and get the uh, get the last of this stuff ready. So we also have these redstone clathrates that are handy. We can melt these down back into redstone uh, or liquidized redstone or I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head. It's really nice though because we can use these instead of our own normal redstone. Saves up on our redstone supplies which we've been taking a pretty big hit on lately. And uh, that way we can fill these redstone flux ducts. So we're going to need some obsidian, some lead for the hardened glass, and then we'll need silver and gold for the electrum. Uh, you can go and grab matching amounts of obsidian and lead because even though it's a 4 to 1 ratio uh, for obsidian dust and lead, you actually end up getting 4 obsidian dust from the pulverizing process. So you end up needing just a 1 to 1 ratio. So... All right, so now that I've taken a nap and uh, I've realized that we're using power over here that we no longer have, so let me get that set up. Um, at this point, we just have to kind of toss down this, and this only works for a little while. Remember, if we reload the world, it stops working, so it's okay that I'm doing this now, but that's why um, I think the problem is that flux ducts can input and output, and the wire connector gets confused as to whether or not it's an output or not. So let's go ahead and get some destabilized redstone melted up with those clathrates. I also have two buckets in my bag from when I was mining. Those clathrates in the world spawn with fluid source blocks that you can pick up. So uh, I'll just toss them in this portable tank and set everything up so that the tank can drain into our fluid transposer. And I'll pick up the tank because we might need it later. Uh, I might just start leaving it in my bag for portable fluid storage. Even though there's a better solution for that actually now implemented. So we have enough to make a single batch of uh, redstone flux ducts here. But they're drained, so we need to fill them with redstone. And once we do, this will take a little while. We'll have a good handful. So 23, 24 is enough for now. Um, well, I'll leave the rest of those processing, but this at least gives us some that we can come back over here to our place and start wiring up a little bit of power stuff. Let me get rid of this creeper first though. Creepers bother me. I don't like having them just lingering around in my world. So yeah, we've got the uh, hardened flux ducts over here. I want to replace those with redstone. That way we don't have any power bottlenecking whatsoever. I mean, you've got to realize we're producing about 4,098 or 4,096 rather uh, RF per tick over with the diesel generator. It's a little bit less than that if you consider the fact that we're using power at the same time for our... Um, machines that create what we run our diesel generator off of, but that's fine. Uh, this pulverizer looks like it's just about done working, and all the other machines are too. I picked up all of our drops from, or all of our redstone flux ducts from everything. So I'm going to go ahead and pick these guys up and move them over to our new place now that we should have everything we need. I'm going to pick up these hardened flux ducts and our little wireless redstone battery from uh, Extra Utilities and break down the last of these uh, flux ducts because at the end of the episode, I think I might try to recycle these uh, there's a recipe that you can use to get your resources back, so we'll focus on that. But for now, I'm just going to grab these machines and figure out where the heck I want to put them in this enormous house. I finished the floor up, by the way. I didn't do that on camera either because it was really boring. I just did marble because I like it. It's white, it's clean, it's bright. Um, I think it kind of fits the style of this house as well. It matches everything, of course, because white is a simple texture. But I did try to vary the pattern in the floor a little bit, and... Uh, once we get everything moved over, I might try to play with it a little bit more, especially uh, kind of might want to do something for a kitchen as well. I think the kitchen area would be kind of cool to have custom flooring. And I think there's a special block in uh, Cooking for Blockheads that actually looks like a kitchen floor tile, so we might try to mess with it if it doesn't uh, vary too much from the normal texture style. So let me get everything uh, routed up here for some power and get everything kind of set up. So... Um, at this point, I'm just kind of figuring out exactly what order I want to put my machines in. I like to have a logical order, at least, so usually I like to cluster things together. And I think this time as well, since we seem to always be processing ores at some point or another, I might try to make an extra pulverizer and uh, an extra furnace. Speaking of furnaces, I'm going to switch over to the uh, thermal expansion redstone furnace, I think, here in a little bit. We'll look up at that recipe in a minute and see what all it will require. But uh, for now, let's just get the last of these machines kind of set up here. So we'll uh, move this uh, redstone or induction smelter. It's not where I really wanted it now that I realized I had that extra machine. So at this point, I think we should be good to move our engineer's workbench over as well. I do like this guy. Even though the interface is a little bit laggy when you open it, I can deal. 
So I think I'm going to put this over in this corner because I plan on having the side, this other side filled with machines as well, so it'll be perfect. So let me put this stuff back in order. I did remember that, uh, you know, as I was setting this up, I you'll see here in just a second, I kind of messed up and put the crafting tables in a different order than they were originally, and it bothered me a lot. So don't mind the fact that I'm doing this now and that it's not the same order. I'll fix it in just a second. You'll see. But, uh, yeah, let's take a look and see. It's, uh, yeah, see, that bothers me. This doesn't flow quite so well. So let me get everything put back in the right order. There we go, much better. So now let's look into that pulverizer. We're going to make an extra one. And let's look into two redstone furnaces here. So we're going to need uh, your usual redstone reception coil, machine frame, uh, so on and so forth. So it's not really that terribly difficult. We'll get three redstone reception coils because we'll have three machines. We're going to need a lot of copper gears. We're going to need six of them, in fact. So let's get our six copper gears. It's going to be, like, what, 24 copper and then six iron and we're going to need some more iron for the machine frame but we'll get to that in just a sec and grab 12 uh tin real quick and we're going to need a lot of iron for the outside uh, of the or for the outer corners of the machine frame recipe as well so let's just go ahead and grab a stack and keep it around no big deal so I've been using the yaba barrels a lot too uh, I haven't finished locking all of them because they're a nuisance to lock uh, but most of them have been locked already. I did this because um, I haven't used Yappa before, and I kind of like it, and I kind of hate it. I had a rant on Twitter the other day if you really want to go see why I feel or how I feel about that, but uh, long and short of it, it's just kind of a personal opinion on design style that I do and don't agree with. So, But we're going to need some bricks. We're going to need some extra redstone here and there. And uh, I messed up here. I was kind of thinking for some reason that I was making two pulverizers as well. So I actually made an extra uh, piston. Not really a big deal. We'll use it in other stuff. But yeah, before you go commenting and face palming and rioting that I wasted materials, it's like, eh, well, I'll use it for something I know for sure. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, I don't know what my brain was thinking here with the whole two pulverizers thing. Because as soon as I go to craft it, I realize, wait, I've already got a pulverizer. Oh, well. So, unfortunately, I didn't make the mistake of making an entire extra pulverizer. Finding a use for that is a little bit more tricky than finding a use for an extra piston. So let's come over here and grab the last of these bricks that we have left. And uh, I don't know why I grabbed the crafting table on the stick. I had a crafting table right there. Maybe it's because I wanted to just use JEI. We'll put our two furnaces adjacent to each other and our two pulverizers adjacent to each other and set everything up so that the inner two machines basically are our ore processing machines and the outer two machines are for just normal crafting. So let me go grab our chest and our crate and put those down and set them up for input output like I like to have. That way we can just toss a whole bunch of ores in and leave it. Let's also finish moving the last couple of things from our old house, because I'd like to tear it down. Uh, this little house was great for starting, and it worked out, but good God, is it too small to really use for much else. If I was doing Tinker's Construct, I might do like I did in the last single-player series, and actually fill this place up with Tinker's Construct stuff, but as you can tell, I've been avoiding it like the plague, just because... I do Tinker's Construct stuff all the time, and there's a lot of cool stuff from other mods that I ignore because of it. So let's get our machines placed down here, or not machines, but our like random miscellaneous craft, uh, crafting items put down. And uh, I think I'm going to use this little alcove area that I made for our kitchen. I think it'd be a really cute area for it. So um, let's see. I guess we can put the craft of the cooking table kind of in the center. That makes most sense to me. Uh, we'll have a lot of kitchen counters. Don't worry. It's actually not going to look as bad as you might think because I kind of break stuff up. So uh, I think I might even actually have an extra kitchen counter somewhere. Let me go, uh, after I finish cleaning up my inventory here, let me see if I've still got that. I want to say I made one too many. Uh, yeah, there it is. Cool. So we can grab our kitchen counter, and I guess we'll put it here, and then we'll put a fridge down at the end, but I have to actually get that together. Uh, the fridge is pretty cool, though. It's just another storage medium. But let's tear down this house. Um, I'm not going to do this as a video montage, I just kind of want to get this all done and take some time to talk about some stuff while we're doing this, so I could do this montage style, but again, that's not what I'm all about. 
So I wanted to take this time to kind of talk about a couple of things. Uh, first of all, I do apologize that I have not been making videos quite on track. Uh, my life has been pretty hectic. Uh, you can ask pretty much anyone who knows me. Um, I'm doing school still, and I'm still shooting for straight A's, but my classes, um, they're not incredibly difficult. This semester I'm taking three 4,000 level computer science classes and then one uh, 1,000 level environmental science class is my last science requirement that I have to have. So um, the 4,000 level classes are not super duper stressful, but they are somewhat. Um, mostly the struggle that I've been having is just balancing real life with school life, with game life, with everything. Uh, most of what you see recorded now was actually just recorded yesterday, even though it's been like two weeks since I've, uh, almost two weeks since I've released my last episode. It's not, I, what I ideally would be doing is recording progressively, and then so maybe this entire episode would be an entire week's worth of IRL work. Um, but what's actually been happening is, you know, crazy crap happens on some nights, and long story short, I just find myself spending one day doing a lot of the work, just kind of like how it used to be. I'm still kind of doing what I can, and I like doing the videos like this. Um, we'll get to that in a minute, but yeah, it's just been kind of hectic. For some reference for you, if you want to know exactly how my life rolls, um, because not only am I doing school, I'm doing work uh, part-time. We have a live demo that we do at my, because I work for research, if you didn't know, and my research position that we have we do uh live demos for whatever code projects we're doing most of the time so last summer was when our last demo was and it was completely live again we take whatever we're doing uh and find a way of live transmitting or streaming or displaying the data um somewhere else wherever the conference is usually they're you know six eight hours away from where we are um and streaming it over fiber networks so that it's almost real time and uh, it's some pretty cool stuff what we do, but the problem is doing that live is very stressful, as you can probably imagine, because you pretty much only have one shot at it, and if you screw it up, then you have an entire conference basically keeping their eyes on you, watching as you screw up. Well, last time it was in the summer, this time it's in March. And our code almost works, but there's a lot of pressure on me to finish it, so... Uh, on top of that, we have meetings that we go to, and when we have presenters from out of uh, out of our school, like from outside of our school, rather from other people, from other companies or other whatever, uh, we are usually more or less required to attend. So basically, between work and school on Monday, I was in my uh, I was in my main building or doing work stuff or doing any number of things for the majority of the day. Tuesday, I was in the same building for 11 and a half hours between work, school, and outside club activities that I was working on because I'm the vice president of our university's main uh, computer science club. Not main, but original computer science club, first one. We have another one dedicated for uh, women in computer science as well. Um, so that's basically just been my life, and on top of that, if you didn't know, I've been in a very awesome relationship with the best woman in my life, and, uh, you know, it takes time to not suck at being a boyfriend, so uh, I've kind of been taking taking the time to try to be an okay boyfriend, so that also takes a lot of time. That's part of why the videos have switched over to the voiceover style, which, by the way, let me know how you feel about that. I like it better because I can construct my sentences better. I'm not good at playing games and talking at the same time. So um, let me go grab some grass and we can fill this area in now. And so uh, please let me know what you think of this video style. I know my girlfriend brought up a good point. It's a, it's a little more impersonal. It's not quite as... Uh, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, real-time here you can see my screw-ups and that I'm a human being, but at the same time it lets me record while she's over here without me having to uh, awkwardly talk to myself with her watching, which I feel very uncomfortable doing, um, even though I know she could care less. It still bothers me. Uh, this lets me just record and then I come back, clean up my video, make sure that it's not including boring stuff, uh, you know, such as cutting out the crafting or whatever and then um, do this voiceover style. So I hope you guys like this style better. It also keeps you from hearing my keyboard and hearing me 
trip over words as much. Although I still do it every now and then. I try not to do it quite as badly. So let me know what you think. I hope this doesn't terribly offend you guys, this style of video. I like doing it a lot better this way. So yeah, this pretty much cleans up this area. And sadly, to, you know, sad to see it go, but I'm glad to have the new place. So like I mentioned earlier, let's go ahead and recycle these conduits. Uh, you can see they pulverize back down into nuggets and redstone, so it's nice to get most of the resources that we want back from that. I also want to look into some thermal expansion upgrades, because we've been working with slow machines for far too long. Uh, let me go ahead and get some of this together. It's just going to be a bunch of invar and bronze, because I'll just do the tier 1 hardened upgrade and some, uh, what is it, the auxiliary reception coil. So it's mostly going to be invar, some bronze, some redstone. I'm going to need more invar, which is okay. It's not like it's the worst thing to craft in the world, especially since we have uh, a proper machine for it now. We're not doing the pulverized version like we used to do. So let me run down here and uh, toss this in the redstone furnace, or induction smelter, rather. We can also start working on getting some of that invar back from our hardened flux ducts, and we can use that for the crafting recipes as well, and just to have as extra in the end. So, uh, let's see, what else do I need here? I guess I need copper and tin to make some bronze. I'll make plenty of it. I keep on running out of it, and it's kind of frustrating to run out of bronze, because I don't think the recipe is enabled from forestry where you just craft it. Which is understandable. I'm not upset by it, but I'm, you know, running into struggles with it every now and then. So let me make sure to grab plenty of stuff before I come down here, because I'm going to keep on running out of resources, I'm sure, but I can at least get started with the auxiliary reception coils. That's just a bunch of redstone and gold. It's not like it's that difficult. Uh, but I did forget where the uh, redstone went, and come to find out, it doesn't go in the recipe at all. So uh, let me go look it up and just see what I'm forgetting. Yep, like I said, no redstone. My bad. So we'll go and get four of these for now. I think I might also red, up, uh, upgrade the induction smelter, but uh, we'll see what we do. For now, I definitely want to get the pulverizers upgraded. Let me grab some iron for the gears and clean up my inventory a little bit. I don't need all this stuff anymore. Uh, I do need some redstone, though. My bad. So you can see kind of off in the periphery, and I'll talk a little more about it. I actually tried out the kitchen tiles uh, from cooking with blockheads. And it's cool, they're nice, but they're not my favorite. They didn't quite match the style. So I made my own using chiseled basalt and chiseled marble and chisel in bits. So uh, it was pretty cool. I like it a lot better this way because they're small tiles, so it matches quite a lot better. But we can go ahead and get the, uh, going back to the original subject here, we can go ahead and get everything ready while we wait for this bronze. Um, the nice thing about the bronze is we need four at a time and it craps four at a time. So it's pretty close. I might look into that compactor upgrade at some point for making gears without costing that piece of iron in the center. That would be nice. But this gets us our four upgrades and our four auxiliary reception coils. We'll go ahead and install all of these at once. And as you can see, the amount of RF that can be stored increases and also the amount of RF that can be used in processing increases. So this isn't a free upgrade. There's no such thing as a free lunch. But there is the ability of upgrading these pretty easily. So let me just kind of refine a couple of things. Out here, I forgot to clean this up and cover it up with redstone, or grass, rather, derp. So um, kind of do want to make sure everything is cleaned up here. Let's go ahead and get ourselves that one last upgrade. I think I do want to upgrade our induction smelter after all, and it's not like it's that difficult, and it'll make future recipes much quicker to craft. So it's only a couple of redstone and a couple of bronze, like you've already seen a dozen times now, so... May as well, right? I mean, it's pretty cheap. We'll go ahead and get this last auxiliary reception coil and get that redstone out of the way there. And go ahead and apply it to our machine here. And there we go. So we should be much faster this way. So, like I said, uh, give me some feedback on this video style. I know it's a little weird because I can talk about stuff that I know is going to happen because it's already happened and I'm watching it back as I edit. But it's also nice because I can predict what to say. I don't have to sit there and fumble over words like I tend to do in live recording style. So I do really like how this house has come out, by the way. I've been trying to figure out what I wanted to do for a while. And this place gives me tons of space for storage. And it gives me a ton of space for pretty much whatever else I might ever need. So we have all these uh, wings off to the left and right that are completely empty. We have tons of space for it. And we have the kitchenette area back here that's pretty cute. I think we might try to put maybe a dining table off on the side or something just for fun. But I really like this area. And uh, the fridge definitely filled in the kitchen very nicely. I think it was a good decision to have the fridge there. 
So, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and I will see you guys in the next one. So until then, who knows when it'll be, but I'll see you when I see you.